I never wanted to be a boring husband. I never wanted that, but I turned out that way. So now guys are dating. How do you become a guy who's not a boring husband on your first date? How do you do that? So you want me to tell you the story? Yeah. <laughs> Did you push record? Thanks again for tuning in to Second Act TV. Steve Horseman is with me with another segment talking about love and relationships after 50. Steve, thanks so much for joining me again. Thank you for having me again. It's good to see you, Silka. Well, I, I, I love talking with you. I love your platform, which is, if you have not seen our first two segments, which we will link to, is Good Guys to Great Men. It's a community, a coaching community. You have products, you have uh, events, etc., all geared towards helping men who are struggling in their relationships. And uh, yeah, I mean, big, big, big topic, of course, here in Second Act, one of the biggest, which is why I'm so glad that you're here talking with me. Uh, we covered, you know, what your platform is. We talked about diffusing the divorce bomb, which also is a course that we'll link to that you have. What I want to concentrate on in this segment is you're single, you're single again. You know, you, there's, you've gotten through the divorce. You're out there again. You're looking for love again. Now what? Yeah, it's one of the biggest concerns. Once a guy gets through the divorce, what now? Right. What now? 50 and 55, whatever. And then and I haven't dated in 30 years. And this whole online thing is intimidating. So sometimes diffusing the divorce bomb means that you diffuse the bomb that's going off inside your chest. So even if your marriage ends, you wind up as a single man. We work with both guys, right? Either in the process of reconciling and improving the marriage or the process of of lovingly letting it go while you take care of yourself. And now you're dating, right? And one of the concepts we use is the concept of a happily divorced man. And one thing I found out, I wrote an article, the 50 ways to be more like a happily divorced man. You can Google it, 50 ways to be a happily divorced man, and it'll come up on the Good Men Project. Yeah, I'll link to it. And so the thing about a happily divorced man is that he's clear about who he is. He knows what he wants. He is unapologetic about being a man. He has a mission. He has a purpose. He has a foundation of, of respect for himself, but also for that that he wants to give others. And, and it goes on and on and on. And the thing I, I thought in my marriage, if I could have only been a happily divorced man when I was married, I bet I wouldn't have gotten divorced. That's weird. If I would have been a happily divorced man, I would have been more exciting, more focused, more energetic, more empathetic, more compassionate. I'd be a better listener. I'd be a better conversationalist. I would be more spontaneous. I would be more of who I always wanted to be anyway. I never wanted to be a boring husband. I never wanted that, but I turned out that way. So now guys are dating. How do you become a guy who's not a boring husband on your first date? How do you do that? So you want me to tell you the story? Yeah. <laughs> No, I, I, I'm like, I'm listening intently. <laughs> There's a lady colleague of mine here in Fort Collins who, she grew up here locally, milking cows, castrating calves, right, building barns, running tractors. She was her dad's son. And she and, and she's a very feminine looking woman. And she goes, I grew up being a dude. And in my 40s, I got tired of being the dude because I would always attract guys who wanted to be the, the woman. And I hated that. So I want to relax. I want to kick my shoes off. I want my hair down. I want to soften up. And I want to date a guy who is a man. So she said, I had two dates in the same week. And one, it was at the same restaurant because I picked it. And I told him that why I liked it and the wine and everything like that. And the first guy shows up 20 minutes late. She's on her second glass of wine. He comes in through the door. He's got his bicycle front tire on his shoulder because he had a flat tire and his helmet's still on and he's sweaty and he's frantic and he's looking all around and he says out loud, I need to pee. Do you know where the restrooms are? And she's there with her second glass of wine as he goes to the bathroom. She didn't get up and walk away, which some people would have done. But she said that that whole story, the whole date was like that. It was all about him. Mm -hmm. He was unfocused. He was, he didn't plan for anything. He didn't know how to order off the menu. He had to ask a thousand questions. He had, he was totally distracted. He was, a, he was being the chick in her mind. He was being the chick. She couldn't relax. Right. Yeah. That's so that weird. was done. Three days later, she had another date, same restaurant. She was gritting her teeth and she shows up early. 
but the guy's already there at a different table. He wanted a table where there was a view. He asked her to sit in a certain chair because he knew that she would like being able to see the view from that place. He knew that she had a 45 minute drive and she'd probably have to pee, so he showed her where the bathroom was. He had already ordered the wine that she told him she liked at that restaurant and it was already there. And he was cool, calm, collected. He didn't give a fuck about anything. He, she loved his energy. And the whole date went like that. He listened, he made eye contact, but he was also clear about what he wanted and who he was. He had answers to questions. He could make a decision. And she softened and she goes, I don't know how you feel about that, Steve. And I don't know how guys feel about it, but that's who I want to date. Well, that kind of sums up how we transform men and good guys to great men. If you want to become that man, and we're unapologetically working with heterosexual men, although everything we teach goes both ways sure. right, right. all the time, um, then, then learn how to become a man of value, a man who shows up early in life, figuratively speaking, a man who has a plan, who has an opinion, who has a decision, but also feels strong enough in yourself to be generous to be quiet, to be empathetic, to listen, and to care. Because when you're strong and healthy in yourself, it's, that's the only time you can actually do those things. If you're weak in yourself, you do those things to get stuff. You're a manipulator. Yeah. And so what Grace found out was that that's the guy she wanted. And she said they're very hard to find. Yeah. And so that's why we, we had started working together. Well, and, and as I was listening to you describe the story, it's like, I can see that man. I can, I actually kind of thought of my boyfriend. He was, he was like that on the first day. <laughs> but, you know, somebody planned ahead. To, it does, that means so much. And to a lot of, I, I would guess, to a lot of men listening to this, maybe they just need to hear that and have that aha moment. This is all I have to do. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to be this overbearing person who is nervous and talks because of nervousness, et cetera, et cetera. And just by you, giving that advice, you know, yes, take, take charge, make, you know, show that you thought about this and then listen, you know, just being aware of that, I think is such important advice for some people. Mm. Yeah. Did you say that your, your current boy, your boy, current, sorry, your, your, your partner was the second guy. Is that what you said? The second guy? The oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the first one. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. Our I, our first date was lovely, and it, it was at my at a place that was very special to me, San Clemente. It was just it was just perfect, and we ended up sitting there for like six hours. You know, so that was that was a great first date, <laughs> and and it does. I I it was it was he was relaxed. There was no pressure. I I tease him still because when we left, he didn't try to kiss me or hug me. He almost kind of hit me on the shoulder a little bit. That. <laughs> <laughs> that well maybe I won't hear from him again <laughs> but it was it was just really nice and and anybody can do that if if sometimes again like you like you said you just need a little coaching that's where it comes in if you don't you know if that doesn't come natural to you would you agree mm -hmm. yeah what do you do uh, if you're uh, with a man who won't take the lead? What do you? What happens to you? What role do you take on if you're with a guy who doesn't make a decision, can't figure out where to go to dinner or what he wants to do? What What, what do you do? I get through the date, and I wouldn't go through. I wouldn't do a second one. I mean, that would just yeah. totally turn me off. I and mean, that's as, as as honest as I can as I can be. That that would not. I would not be attracted to that. That wouldn't be a second date. Yeah. And sometimes women are in relationship with that guy and he's gotten to a point to where he's a people pleaser. He thinks she likes making decisions. She likes paying the bills. She likes painting the house. She likes changing her own oil. I just let her do everything. She just likes that. And, and the reason he thinks she likes it is because he hasn't been taking any initiative and it's, and he doesn't like fighting with her. So he backs off and the whole time she's thinking to herself, when is he going to step up? Right. And it's a myth that women love being in control. And some do, right? There's a small percentage who love being the dude in the relationship all the time. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But the greater percentage of men and women have a more traditional, she likes to be in her feminine, he likes to be in the masculine. Yeah. What guys haven't been taught in the last 30 years is what does it mean to live in your masculine in a healthy, loving, compassionate way? This is how to be a man without being a dick. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Which we might just title this video. We'll see. <laughs> yeah.
And so by the time you're dating, right, there you are on a patio and it's summertime. She's got red wine. You've got a beer. It's your second date. She loves you. She's beautiful. Her hair, her eyes, everything about her has got your heart just going a little bit faster. But you're, you're not saying much. And she goes, can I ask you a question? And you go, sure, I'm an open book. I'm just wondering what happened in your divorce. Why did you get divorced? Oh, but most guys would like, oh, I didn't know she was going to ask that. This is a training session we do. Uh-huh. Now, the right, the right answer, you know what the wrong answer is, like, ah, I don't know, she was a bitch, I hate her. Right. right? And, and when, you're, when you've done the work, you can say something like, and you look at her right in the eye and you don't break eye contact. You said, not every relationship was meant to be saved, although I tried. I learned things about me and my failure to be a good husband. I also learned things about women and relationships that my dad never told me. I'm starting on a new foot today, and with you, I'm hoping we can explore this together because it's fascinating. I got a lot of years. I'm looking forward to it. What a Something. great answer. You're almost giving me chills. <laughs> <laughs> See, guys, take notes. Take notes. But that was honest. It was vulnerable. You didn't fall on your sword. You didn't have to be a dick by throwing her under the bus. And you see, and, and when you're painting a future, like our next date is going to be epic, right? It's going to, I mean, this is good, but next one is going to be epic. Um, and then the next question the women ask sometimes is, well, wow, wow. <laughs> That's, I didn't think, I, I never heard anybody so clear about what they believe about their divorce as how you sound. And the guy goes, well, Steve said she would say that. And then she goes, can I ask you another question? And he goes, yeah, I told you, I'll answer anything, whatever you got. What do you got? She goes, I'm just wondering where you're going or what you're looking for in, in life and in, in women. What are you looking for? Again, a question that will ruin a man if he hasn't thought about it. I, 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 don't know. <laughs> I like somebody nice, right? Um, and so, but that's the wrong answer. The, the trip on your tongue and stutter step through the whole thing to make it sound like you've never even thought of that question before. What kind of man are you? What do you want in life? Where are you going? And what kind of relationship do you desire? And he might say something like, I've discovered that I want a woman who will challenge me. I want a woman who will play with me, somebody who's empathetic and naturally kind by nature. I want to be able to explore together and have adventure. I like spontaneity. I like a woman who has energy with me, but I also like quietness. I want to be able to talk openly and honestly about stuff that's hurt us in the past without being shamed by it because I'm a vulnerable guy and I don't give a fuck what you think about it. Now, when I'm with the right woman, we're going to laugh, we're going to cry, and the sex is going to be epic. What about you? <laughs> oh, that is great. Do you get it? What she says is, I think I'll have the tacos. What are you getting? Because she can't, she's not going to answer. Yeah, I know. That would blow me away. Do you, do you supply little ear pieces where, you know? <laughs> <laughs> No, because the guy said, well, I can't say it like you do. It's not It's not the line. It's not the script. It's not the words. Because when you are being a man who's whole, when you are full, when you are full of your own sense of worthiness and value and confidence, and you clearly understand where you're coming from and your principles that guide you and where you see yourself going, you automatically say all the right things. There's no rehearsing. Yeah. That's why we don't play around with pick up lines and bullshit like that. Right. 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 Well, and, and on all the dating segments or many of the dating segments we've done is, of course, one of the first pieces of advice is have, have a clear understanding of what it is that you want. And that's the first thing you want to do. Now, you don't want to put that necessarily a list on a dating profile. That's another story. But you do want to know. And then if, and if you know, you can express that and that exudes confidence. And yeah, it, that makes it very attractive. Steve, gosh, mm -hmm. we're, uh, we got a few more minutes left <laughs> <laughs> yeah. on this topic, you know, starting over again and being the man that, uh, that attracts women and feeling good about yourself. Any other, uh, last words or tips that we absolutely need to bring up in here? Uh, just review what you've already said, right? If you don't know who you are, you will become a chameleon. And so uh, the worst thing you could do on dates is, oh, you like pizza? I like pizza. You like anchovies? I like anchovies. And you're, you're trying desperately to find common ground without ever communicating what your ground is, what you believe in. And as Dr. Glover says in his book, he wrote No More Mr. Nice Guy, but he wrote Dating Essentials for Men next. Your job is to filter out people as quickly as possible by being so clear, so grounded, so unapologetically you, and so present 
that you'll scare the wrong people away in a heartbeat. And you can't be afraid of that. That's your job. And until you become that man, you're going to be a chameleon and you're going to be every woman becomes a candidate for wife and sex partner. Right. And which is the worst place to be in the dating circuit. Yeah, that's, that's a great answer. And, and that doesn't mean being arrogant. That means, like you Absolutely. said, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, there's a big, big difference between confidence and arrogance. So uh, it was terrific talking with you, Steve. Again, <laughs> I will we'll link to all of your information, uh, to your courses, to your platform. Uh, I encourage people, men, <laughs> uh, I know there's a lot of you out there struggling with this steve would be a great person to, to get in touch with and there are so many other topics i want to talk with you about that uh, i hope that you'll come back on second act and uh, let's let's figure out how you know and other topics that we can get out there and help both men and women because i think uh for both of us hearing it helps both of us move forward so uh thank you so much and we'll see you next thank time you. on second act tv <laughs>